so we also we talked about it in terms of um, grappling of identities um, and how complex an issue that is um, to both be providing equity and access, but also be um, sensitive to artists who don't want to be identified as specifically coming from a different a specific ethnic or um, racial or specific um, community that there are, it has to be read that way. Um, so we basically, we don't have a solution, we're just like it's really complex um, and problematic um, and that um, we need to keep the, that kind of discussion at the forefront of discussions whenever we're working on a project with different artists that we all need to have that part of the conversation, this uh, grappling of identities and what, how important that is to the artist's work or not. Um, and then we talked about development of discourse and that there needs to be more written criticism um, to be more inclusive, so criticism and writing and discourse about um, people of color or uh, artists of uh, various um, ethnic backgrounds. Um, and then finally, um, when we talked about our allies, we really think the youth of the U.S. are our allies. Um, they're growing up in a really um, difficult time and they're also the most um, diverse of any in the history of the United States. So um, we think that they're we are our next, um, our future, of course. Yeah. So, so okay. allies, allies, who are you enlisting? The youth. The youth. The youth. The youth. Um, so our table, um, really, like probably every single table here, consists of people who wear many hats. Um, we have artists, artists who also are presenters, artists who are also their agents, artists who are running uh, companies and organizations. And um, what we talked about um, is a little bit that you know some people we were saying we need to do um, less so we can do more. We need to say no so we can say yes. Um, so basically we boiled it down to we'd love to all be able to give our work, whatever our work is, a little more care. We'd like a little more breathing room, a little more space to care for ourselves, our art, our colleagues. Um, and am I missing anything? <laughs> um, so being able to spend that time uh, focusing on ourselves and on, on the uh, work that we all are <coughs> doing. doing now, it's obvious that all of us um, were inspired by this week and by the allies at our tables and in this room. And um, we, we thought that these were our allies, that our allies were our communities and uh, our mentors and our peer-to-peer uh, -peer mentors even.
Uh, we're in a world of overload, so much information without a lot of curation of information throughout the year, and uh, we're trying to figure out how to, no answers yet, but how to curate that information, rely on our other networks, uh, like Alliance for uh, Art, Artists, Artist Communities, thank you, and uh, Dance USA, et cetera. We're all doing a lot of the same work in these different pods that we do. How do we, how do we uh, coalesce some of that information? What am I missing? And allies. Our allies are everybody in this room, the, the uh, community, uh, the organizations I just mentioned, and I think we're it. That's it. <laughs> Jazz dance to you all. Thank you. We uh, had similar discussions as everyone else, and we didn't, um, but we also believe everyone in the room are allies, potential allies. I think the moment where we felt a rise in the conversation was around, uh, I think, in communities of color, arts of color, we have in our, in our room identified the problem. Large institutions have identified the diversity problem. And where we rose, we're, okay, we, we're done identifying the problem. We want to figure out how to make the change. And I think that's where we all kind of went, yeah. And then our time was up. So, uh, <laughs> uh, what, and also, then something we took out of one of the sessions that everybody like was also in the Paris baby, articulate your practice, practice, because they have articulated it and are articulating it upon you. And the other is, um, the work deserves extended audiences beyond um, just the world premieres. Um, and also really looking at examining code language. Um, we were in a session where experimental equals your Eurocentric work and community equals people of color. And learning to identify that code language um, is part of what Linda's saying. Um, and that will be our ally on all sides. The session about uh, transitions, one of the big takeaways was this uh, issue about uh, documenting not only the history and the legacy of what's done, but also the operational side of that, so that you can aid transitions which sometimes are planned, but sometimes are unplanned, so that there's a way of really knowing what was best practices and what didn't work and why, uh, particular kinds of initiatives, um, and the need to sort of hopefully have programmatic plans in, in advance for at least a year so that the incoming person can actually get to know the staff and the ways of working in their community without having to have that instant strain of trying to work for the next kind of season. But the, there was a recognition of both documentation on many levels of our work is not done well, but this particular this kind of documentation of uh, operational and uh, the reason behind that operational decisions being made are we're aware of the document in advance. And Anthony talked about how she was going to spend the next six months doing this uh, uh, in the end. And then we also had The idea about really suggesting values and language that might reshape that dialogue and sort of alleviate the systemic racism that's coming up through grant programs and whether or not in terms of NPN's own role in um, fashion and cultural policy that this might be these kinds of languages to be shared with allies and grant makers in the arts. And there was also a discussion about whether or not there might be uh, leveraging current opportunities such as production residency grants that are existing through various programs or new programs that could offer opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer, um, mentorship and dramaturgy for artists of color. Um, and I know this has been done in the, amongst presenters who are working in the world of theater, that role of dramaturgy has been seen as lacking and people are trying to develop those skills and just thought that this could also benefit this dialogue. All right, did we capture the allies? <laughs> no, <laughs> So we, we, um, we, refine, we brought our conversation into a few questions. Uh, and the questions are, how can we, with sincerity and beautiful art, embrace and challenge and even perhaps leverage dominant privileges such as whiteness in a time of rising ethnic racial, in a time of rising racial and ethnic phobias and fears? And how do we get beyond the echo chamber current communities and peel this onion to get deeper. Um, and our allies, it's a little, our allies are inclusive atmospheres that can recruit new people to our art and our dialogue. 
All right, we have more questions than answers. How to pair a long-term vision with the immediacy of this moment? How do we apply integrity as we advocate for each other? How do we create the language that creates opportunity for pushback and growth? How can we remix the code so that we don't have to switch? What are the infrastructures needed to support sustainability and growth of artists of color and other targeted identities that build power and interdependence on the margins? What are you willing to reconsider? For our allies, Linda spoke about allies as community organizers, which definitely resonated with me, but I'd also like to encourage everybody to Google the phrase accomplices, not allies, which is the name of a zine talking about this concept of the ally industrial complex. <laughs> and how many people have become, um, I will say, uh, use the allyship phrase and the badge of honor to feel that they are statically in a place of uh, higher moral authority than the people they are allies to. And the accomplice uh, concept is one that's being developed by particularly indigenous communities and other communities of color that I've, I've looked to and has humbled me in my work as an accomplice. And last but not least. And I think a subtext of our conversation about allyship was um, wanting to work with those who are willing to transform the public discourse and how do you question and actually, and actually remix and fix that. So. Um, our table attended many of the same sessions, um, so we had an interesting school of thoughts. Um, our main takeaway was that um, we're facing a diverse set of complications. Um, we need to examine the time and history of our field and the conversations that have already been had. Um, we need to think more deeply about hope. How do we measure it? Why do we measure it? And who are we measuring it for? We need to think more deeply about our financial health. Our second uh, big takeaway was um, recognizing greater histories, asking bigger questions, continuing the philosophical dialogue, and bringing more people to that table. And at that table, how do we change the conversation to action? Our allies are everyone in this room, NPN, and uh, the nonprofit Finance Fund. <laughs> How many tables just quickly you still have to go? Yeah, just quick. All right, great. Yeah. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, we also talked about staying connected, um, and we actually circulated a little email list and just connected ourselves so that we could check in with each other throughout the year. We talked about how to um, not meet yet next year and be like, oh, how was your entire year? Because I haven't talked to you since then, but actually, keep this network of support active um, throughout. And then we talked a lot about uh, indigenous artists and supporting indigenous communities and the allies that we need to do that, uh, not only in this room and in the field, but in our home communities. And what it would look like if um, acknowledgement of the indigenous people of the land were an expectation of every single art, art and culture convening from now on everywhere. And um, so we talked about uh, not only supporting um, new work um, and, and uh, artists here in the States, but then uh, allowing a frame of understanding colonization to allow us to connect across issues and communities and globally. And, um, and then we also talked a lot about how does art actually change beliefs and narratives and the importance of engaging youth and um, finding those moments in uh, development when art and cultural practice can actually shift a person, change a person for, uh, for their life. So we talked about infiltration, which kind of goes along with the accomplice idea um, that we said.
language, which is appended to uh, how we do all these groups. And uh, you talked about how in a world where you're having to promote your work or promote your season, uh, language is critical. And it's easy to get into patterns of language that, uh, that are sort of falsified and, and aren't actually communicating. And uh, to the challenge was how can we as artists speak about our work in ways that actually translate uh, the heart of what we're trying to do to people who maybe don't understand what we're doing. And to not just use words that we think uh, everyone understands and they don't. And um, so the idea which Christy brought up in her uh, talk about rehabilit rehabilitating rhetoric is to actually challenge ourselves to have a uh, language practice where we're really examining the words that we're using and uh, extracting the words that are making people smaller and um, finding language that actually empowers people and creates bridges between people. And in terms of uh, allies, it's the relationships between the curators, the artists, and our community. And listen, uh, one of the things that's critical to all of this is you have to listen. You have to observe what happens when you say something and see the, the ripple effect that's having in your audience. And if it's not hitting them or it's not connecting, changing the words.
commitment to, uh, well, it's again the language. We, yeah. So either fighting or striving for uh, greater equity uh, and uh, trying to fight for equity from, with, against uh, uh, key holders. See, now we're like going to get into it. But, um, <laughs> Of um, those types of uh, 
um, ideas being seeded from the very beginning so that we're not just relying on college level students to sort of learn something of you know, this new experience. Um, and so we said that we should start looking at ways to start introducing art and discourse in our youth, create spaces where artists of color can be involved with people who are writing and thinking about works of artists of color, so that you have a residency where you have artists of color there that maybe you also invite um, not just the formals and visual artists, but also people that are going to be critics, so they all can interact and have a discourse. Um, our accomplices would be schools, educators, artists, residency spaces, communities, blockers, and um, critics. And I've been asked to say that we affirm the brunch pun. Uh, brunch. Rum punch party. There you go. William, over to you, and then we'll be back. Wow. Uh, give yourselves a big round of applause. Yourselves throughout the rest of the day and um, on the internet afterwards. Um, but we're not done yet. Yes? Can you just mention that this conversation is being is, is on HowlRound? It's on HowlRound. So you can go take a look at it to refresh your memory and we'll bring it back next year. Great. But there's more. So uh, to introduce the next art first, please uh, welcome Joey Reyes, Bob Makla, and San Jose. So, Michael had the opportunity to present the work by Karen Anzoategui called Se, and uh, you will get to see an excerpt of that piece today. Um, I'm just gonna read a short description of the piece. Uh, Se explores the queer transnational experience told through the politics of a soccer game. This unique theatrical experience includes live music, soccer tricks, some James Brown dancing, and Karen's charismatic and engaging storytelling. Soccer fanaticism, sexual identity, political repression, and economic collapse are all part of a transnational Latino experience that doesn't get more real, fun, and poignant than this. To see another exit of Sir, if you're in the LA area on December 17th, it's going to be taking place at the new seat created. So if you can help me in welcoming Karen Antoteki. Hasta el sol que entre hojas de palmetas y 
song bounces his reflection. But the ball bouncing is the only song played. En la distancia el ruido de botellas unidas y puerto, puertas de hierro se despierta. Calladito los pibes juegan. The kids are so quiet. All you hear are prep recycled bottles clanking on shopping carts. Calma. No se gritan, no se ríen. Oigan con los murmullos de sus pies. See the kids kick and play, playing with the sound effects of their payless kicks of their street on their feet, on the ground pounding, passing them the ball of the lazy neighbors with their shouting, like, hey! Una fue. 
now, after those sort of um, concise and really, really uh, strong um, sharings, to call them, I wanted to have MK come up and reflect on some of what we heard and what she heard, because it's a chance for her when she's able. Um, it's a chance for her.
few of the headlines that I think we also might want to keep in mind. The Republican catfights are escalating. Trump holds lead as Cruz surges. Headline this morning. We're bracing in Baltimore as the police prepare for the Freddie Gray verdict today. Three years ago marks the anniversary of Sandy Hook Elementary School, in which the children who go there now will for the first time be present in their school on that day. Star Wars is having its world premiere tonight. <laughs> the Force Awakens. And with that in mind, I wanted to ask you to begin a process together on this table. I'm, I'm going to, the way we're going to go across this is that so many of us across these different sessions want to be in one another's sessions and simply couldn't be. So we're going to do something that allows everybody to talk about this questions concept and what we're talking about in this session. Where are we going from here, right? So I'd like you all at your tables. We have pencils and things. Um, to take and share, drawing from the sessions that you were at, drawing from those very sessions and what were the salient concerns, salient gifts, um, and, and come up with some of your key sort of highlights in there in order to create together a short concept of your top commitment coming out of here, right? So it allows you to share some of the knowledge. We're going to do this for about a half an hour, but we're going to have an hour first in the middle of it, probably another one. So drawing from what you experienced and what was offered in the sessions, share those things and pick out together as a group what you imagine your top commitment coming out of here or your top takeaway coming out of here is. So we're going to, I'm going to have you pop up later. And the other thing in this, please don't forget it, is uh, who you would identify and enlist as your allies in fulfilling that commitment. Okay? Do we all get it? Because you don't need to hear my thoughts. I'll share them later on. What's that? Repeat it one more time. Okay. You're going to talk together around some of the salient content that you experienced in the diverse attendance that you had in sessions. And drawing from those things as you share them now across your table, find one together that you feel you can make as a kind of top commitment or as a top moving forward takeaway. And then just share with us in this group who you're going to identify and enlist as allies. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's a little abstract, but it's going to be phenomenal. <laughs> now you get to talk to each other. Okay? So we'll have about a half an hour. There's going to be an art person in the midst, and we'll go back to it. Yeah? And then MK and I are going to come up and facilitate that process. Okay. Thanks.
30, our first event is to be moved to 12 to 10. So please make sure that uh, you stick around for us to close out this morning's session with some amazing art. Um, and uh, to start us off this morning, I want you to uh, welcome from You Speaks and the Living Work Project, Joe and Melissa. Forever. 
Alive before God, and now this falsity forged on my felonious record. I'm fucked for life and for afterlife, for I have lied before God. I have sworn false before record. I lied in the places that I'm supposed to be honest. I lied and fell inside myself where I stayed, convinced that these places, these spaces, they just ain't for me. I had lost the faith. This is a little record. A little backroom deal where we really deal with nothing. When you buy benevolence with false mercy and I sell my word until it ain't worth shit no more. These drug courts were legislated with a particular face in mind. A Reagan era design that deemed drug use and drug abuse and drug addiction and crackhead and black people synonymous. I am drug addict anonymous. No one cares what my problem is. I'm a problem in this system. I don't have I am a drug problem. You don't care about fixing me. You just looking for a fix for a first time. Now I'm violent, drug offender. I feel like I'm one in many get pushed out. This is hell of mine. This conveyor belt. This one size fits all. Cookie cut of justice. One built to help. Drowned in heaven. The humanity took care of it like a slave to ritual and routine. Like an addict. You do
you talking about? Do you guys need five more? Okay, five more.
more empathetic. And how can you stay connected? So more creative. How can we stay more connected? And the second half was who we identify as our colleagues, and I stated, we all stated that this entire network, there's so many ways that we can all work together. We just gotta continue to have those conversations to make a difference. And we're also talking about how do we encapsulate what we've experienced over you know, this uh, meeting, and how do we implement that in our cities? So I think if we continue to make efforts, we can continue to make even a bigger impact, not only in the arts, but in, through humanity as well. Great. And who are your allies that you need to enlist? <coughs> Sounds like each other. Each other. Got it. Okay. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> Revisit organizational values to address urgency and responsiveness in the organization. This will be addressed by focusing on long-term strategies and building expansive programming in an effort to widen the pie and cultivate connections with humanity. And our allies are humans. <laughs> Discussion at this table, it was about um, it was about the evaluation of 